So this is where we're playing Adelaide Street Circuit. It's been the traditional season opener and it will remain that way for some time yet. 3.22 kilometres, top speed of 245 kilometres per hour on approach to turn eight. But it, remember, it's half a street circuit and half a parkland circuit. So it's got all the characteristics that you have out of a street circuit. Bumps, manholes, painted lines, concrete walls. The absolute lot, it's a ripper of a place. And it's brutal. 15. And it will be different under these changing conditions into the evening. Lowndes on pole. The second time he's had pole at this circuit. He's won here five times. OK, guys, I want to show you the thermal camera. Watch this. Now, have a look. Look at that. There's the burnout marks. That's the heat that Craig Lowndes just put into the road. Look at that. Absolutely fabulous. Now, what they want to do when they come back around, he wants to line his car right back on that clean rubber there, that clean bit of tarmac, and a little bit of temperature in the road. Very, very important. Beautiful. Absolutely. Straight away. Lays down the heat. OK, let's take a look at the starting grid. Incredible. Valvoline Racing GRM on the front row of the grid in their first event back in almost three decades. Wing Cup with Jason Bright from Team BOC next to him on row two. Mark Winterbottom, Lee Holdsworth, the leading Erebus Mercedes inside the top 10. We have all five makes featuring in the top 10 here in qualifying. Extraordinary. Scott Pye is already off to a good start. Chaz Mostert needs to fight his way back after issues in race one that forced him into the wall. Todd Kelly had his hands full in race one and Tim Slade was looking good, but then it all fell away. Nick Perkat starting from position 13 with James Moffat next to him. Got Shane Van Gisbergen and Fabian Coulthard, Rick Kelly and Garth Tander way back in 18th spot for GT. David Reynolds, DNF next to his name for the first race. Will Davison worked his way through the field earlier today. He'll be looking to do that again. David Wall and Jack Perkins back in the category after a four-year absence. Dale Wood comes off a successful Dunlop series. He's got Russell Ingle next to him. And that's Robert Dahlgren out of Sweden, now relocated to Melbourne. It was a long-time ambition for him to come here and race in our category, and he knows now how hard it is. He's married with a couple of kids. He's enjoying life in Australia, and he's trying to get his head around these V8 supercars. Chased up a couple of issues, and I wondered about the steering problem that we reported with Todd Kelly Car 7, and it turns out that part of the steering and suspension component at the front of the car called the upright on both sides had broken steering clevises. They were very lucky to get that car home. The forces that go through the car across the top of that curbing down at turn one and two are pretty extreme. They're going to have to watch that in this event. Massive understeer for Rick Kelly. Had to use first gear down at turns nine and 14. They've tidied up the balance on that car, they hope, going to this one. I reported before that lots of people changing the rear of their cars to cope with the cooling out and the temperatures. Front brake locking issue for Fabian Coulthard, but pretty pleased with the way things panned out for him in terms of performance. Generally speaking, the Ford Performance Racing cars locking of the front brakes and in particular a general instability. One minute they're not sure whether it's the fronts or the rears. Jack Perkins had that problem and that's giving them a little bit of grief so they'll have to be very, very careful with that. Keep coming. Keep coming. Stop there, mate. So what an interesting battle to the first corner. Scott McLaughlin, front row of the grid, on debut for Volvo. Five minute factors in the top seven. Guys, final cars moving into position on the grid right now. And if you look along down the grid, you'll see the lineup of yellow flags as each car moves into its position. The officials retract those flags. So it's like a cascade effect. They're all in. Green flag, Mully's waved it. Go. In many ways, it's the great unknown. Off they go into the twilight at the Clipsal 500. A terrific start from Craig Lowndes. McLaughlin couldn't get it away to challenge him into turn one, but instantly Winkup gets a jump on Jason Bright, and they start fighting through the first turn. On the outside up here, staring directly into the fading sun, James Courtney in car 22. This is where Mostert went into the wall in race one. They're looking for tra clean track space. Most important corner on the circuit, turn seven. It unleashes them onto Brock, Brock Strait. Single file. 
it's a great start from Lowndes. All the elements of his start perfect. The initial jump for Craig was good, the bite was good, and the secondary component of the start was very strong as well, so that's given him an air gap. Turn nine, contact there between the Holden Racing Team, Scarf Tander, and his stable mate, Nick Perkett, cut triple two. Very good first lap there for Lowndes. Good gap, great start, no mistakes. A lot of pressure now being applied to McLaughlin from series champion, Jamie Winkup. That gap you can see is one second, Lowndes to McLaughlin, but Lowndes just burnt a curb hop. The end of the first lap, that's not good. Doesn't need to do that too early. Needs to keep them up his sleeve for late in the race in case he needs an attack. Something happened with the start for Scott McLaughlin because it had a little bobble and it moved and I thought that it actually had a drama then I actually thought that it turned the engine off. So that, that hurt his start. So it made Lowndes start look a bit better. This that, is a good run. A good run for Winkup. Watch for him. If he gets a good run here through eight, he'll look to try and get the car down the inside at nine. Tries to keep the momentum up, but I tell you what, there was nothing wrong with the mid-corner balance of the Volvo, oh, but there it is, dive. the diagonal run to the inside. He can't stop it, Jamie Wincup, but crisscross is on. McLaughlin goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with him. Jamie's got the inside running now for 11, and holds on. Great exchange, boys. Oh, and he got the fence on the way out there. That was a very good piece of driving by both guys. It was a big dive bomb from Winkup, and it looks like there at that stage Scott McLaughlin contemplated doing the same. Bright's now got a little bit of a run out of the final corner. We saw Craig Lowndes and James Courtney have a massive accident on the run into turn 11 a few years ago, so very easy to make contact there. And when Winkup and McLaughlin drove around there side by side, very healthy level of respect, very good racing quality, very high level drive, driving. Impressive that Red Bull can make their cars work on tyres that are still coming up to temperature and pressure, and yet at the back end of the tyre life, long in the run, they've got very good consistency. And if you look at the lap by lap of their two cars relative to Shane Van Gisbergen in the previous race, they really made margin in the last 10 or 15 laps over Shane. It's not an easy thing to do to be quick at the start of your sequence and then hold that advantage late in the sequence. Well, sometimes it's actually a bad sign. If you're really fast right at the start, you know it's going to hurt the tyre and you go backwards, don't you? So your point is, is absolutely 100%. Guys, this is the amazing thing about this Adelaide Street Circuit. You are so close to the action. We're here at the turn onto the main straight, and you can literally reach out and touch the cars as they go by. And this is where you get the real intensity for what is happening in this race and just how close these guys get. Nose to tail, it is absolutely incredible. If your chest is not beating, if your heart's not beating out of your chest here, it never will. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like yours is Barrett's. 1.9 seconds the margin from Lowndes to Win Cup. Teammates one and two at the moment. Red Bull Racing Australia, then McLaughlin in the Volvo. Here's Jason Bright applying pressure, but he can't get too racy here and, and expose the rear end of that car because right behind him is Mark Winterbottom, who in turn has got Lee Holdsworth behind in the Mercedes. James Courtney, who had way too much understeer in that first race, he said to me, he was really animated when he described it and delayed in his pit stop. So that explains a little bit of what went on there for the Holden Racing Team. Then Mostert, this is a better run inside the 10, and Scotty Pye. Now Bright. Bright. Oh, ah. That was going to be close. Wow. And it was the yelping you could hear in the background was the inside front tyre of Jason Bright's, well, apart from us yelping in the box, it was Jason Bright's Dunlop hard tyre really uh, struggling to stop there when he realised that McLaughlin was going to turn down on him. And look at the gap that opened up as a result of that. So he's going to have to do that work again, Bright. That's where Barretz was, just on the inside there at turn 14. So McLaughlin now complaining of oversteer. Fastest lap of the race done by Jamie Winkup as he...
cuts into the deficit of his teammate Craig Lowndes. Remember, we're going to see some pit stops depending on where you are in the field. Here's the first, Robert Dahlgren. I think you'll expect to see car seven in as well, Todd Kelly. Oh. Just to get it going. These are the things that he's just going to have to get used to. I said to him earlier today, I bet you it's not 30 degrees where you come from in Sweden on the east coast. He said, yeah, minus. <laughs> I was going to say Fahrenheit. <laughs> For our Queensland viewers who are on seven, mate, switch back over to seven to continue watching the Clips or 500 now. So that's the freight train trying to reel in the Red Bull Racing Australia Commodores there at the front. And that's the job that Wing Cup has been doing once he made that aggression, aggressive move on Scott McLaughlin as we welcome back our Queensland viewers on seven. Prime time V8 supercar racing and Wing Cup just keeps chipping away with fastest laps and he's now got the gap to under a second. Here's all the stops we spoke about Holdsworth, Courtney, Todd Kelly, Nick Perkat have all come in. Courtney, they'll hope for a cleaner one this time. That was neat. It was a rattle gun problem in the previous race. Todd Kelly in and out. So 0.8 is the gap between Lowndes and Wincup. Jamie did a 21.5 on that last lap, and that's only a tenth away from the best lap in the previous race of Jason Bright. And as the temp cools out, you'll see the lap times improve. Problem here, Jack Perkins. Oh, we've seen this happen here many times. It's a very tight pit lane. He might cop a penalty for that. He might have been better to try and sneak around the corner. I would have thought so too. Here we go. There's a bit of action here for Lee Holdsworth, I think. In fairness to Jack there, you're very much limited in terms of steering lock. So he possibly has had no choice but to press on. When he got to the paint also, yeah. it's very hard. We've actually seen cars in the little guardrail there where you just can't make it in. So on the left, you end up getting to the paint and you're gone. So that's Wink Cup in. Same strategy as before. Trying to pull the same trick as race one. They've got problems. They've got problems on the right hand side again. That's took an eternity to get that off. It's right underneath our commentary box window. So they've got an issue with that gun. Now that's could be anything. Could be human error. Oh, oh, and there's two cars there. There's Courtney and Holdsworth. Yep, black flag for Jack Perkins. What we saw down there on the way into pit lane. So, wow, Jamie Winkup, you rarely see errors out of this Red Bull racing team. They had a similar problem with car 888 in race one. And this time it's happened to car number one at a crucial time. He can't afford to give away any seconds in pit lane. And that's what's happened. So Craig Lowndes has a big breather out in front as the sun is setting. His gap over Scott McLaughlin now is 3.7 seconds. Looking out the rear and now the front of Wing Cup. So his job is to get back into the focus, put that behind him and make up the time that he lost stationary in pit lane. Mark Winterbottom. You see there, Matt, the grip level of the concrete is very low, so he's gone by the marks by about four or 500 mil then. But the great thing is it didn't affect him. No, it's a good stop. Good stop. And there's the game. Look at that game. Isn't that remarkable? That's the kind of stuff that went right for Wing Cup in 2013 on his way to another title and went wrong for Frosty. And today, that worked perfectly. They got in there, they did it quickly, and they released him into fresh air. Holdsworth looks strong, doesn't he? The car looks good. Flows very nicely through there. You can see the amount of curb that the guys use. Let's just have a look at the curb usage. So that's turn five. 
lot of inside curb there for Wing Cup. And then at six, a lot of curb again, then a lot of exit curb on the little run down to seven. And this exit curb operates like a motocross berm. You slide the car out to the curb and grab it. And this is this great run up Brock Strait to one of the wildest corners in Australian motorsport. Turn eight, 245 kilometers an hour and 235 mid-corner. He got a better run on Holdsworth and down the inside he goes. Stay with us. This is a great battle between Jamie Winkup and Craig Lowndes leading. here at Clipsal and look at this crunch for James Courtney in with Lee Holdsworth as well and the door has come away from its hinges on car 22 but facing the opposite way look at this he tried to thread the needle three does not go into that an extraordinary so the passenger side door is now left hanging open he was instructed to try and get alongside the wall and knock it off instead he's been given a black Flag, mechanical black flag to come in and the Holden Racing Team SP Tools crew have to go to work doing some running repairs by ripping the door off and no other option and now they've sent James back out like that and in the blue overalls behind there is the category technical manager which is uh, Frank Adamson the yellow flag has come out and it's a safety car on course so race director Tim Schenken's in the background on race management channel advising everybody of this uh, 
situation with the safety car Tanders come in, but I'm a little bit surprised that Frank sent the car out there with the door off it. Well, I'm, I'm with you. The HRT Mini Moke at the moment, I, I would think they'll, they'll actually ask him to come back in and fit a door, I would think. So it's going to be uh, interesting now. There's, what, five, six drivers who haven't stopped. Lowndes, McLaughlin, Coulthard, Davison, Wood and Ingle. It's the scene of the pit paddock area here, the corporate area and the main grandstand on the pit straight. So Lowndes' 4.2 second margin will evaporate. The Petters Chrysler safety car is activated. As Lowndes goes straight into pit lane. So I believe the safety car's been activated for debris on the circuit. And this is going to benefit already Wink Up. We saw the drama with his stop, but this is going to benefit Lowndes having this stop under this condition. Well, it is, mate. He's going to go for two tyres again like he did last time. When we saw early in the day, it was a bit tough putting two tyres. Now, you can see there, they're only going to give us a of fuel. They really, this is not about fuel at all. Just enough to get him home. Two tyres in good shape this late in the race. I reckon this is going to put him in really good shape. The order changes the safety car out there. We'll take a break. What will happen next at the Clipsal 500? Welcome back. You haven't missed a race lap 
because the Petters Chrysler safety car is still in control of the field after the incident involving James Courtney and that door, Brett. Yeah, this is the piece of metal, Matty, that was formerly known as James Courtney's side door. This is what Lee Holdsworth wheel will do to your side panel door. Uh, there is where the rubber is contacted. The wheels grind it out there, basically popped it out, and the wind pressure at that speed has done the rest of the damage. So at the moment, James Courtney has the best air conditioning on the twilight race so far. But Queensland and Collingwood fans will be glad to know your signage has not been damaged. Turn just before. Thanks, Barretts. Yeah, this is going to be interesting to watch now. This is the latest safety car restart rule being revamped for the, this year. And a lot of this has come about through that really exciting stuff we had in the 60-60 last year. So there you are, the two AZ zones. That's acceleration zone. The leader of the pack's got to slow them up. They're going to do 50 or 60 Ks, but they must stay very much in Indian file. No diverting from that will be allowed at all. Now, as they come round here, here they are bunching up. OK, that was a safety car you just saw peeling into the lane. Right, 50 to 60 k's an hour here, no faster. They must be in close proximity of each other. And Jason Bargwana, our new driving standards observer, said he won't tolerate anyone pulling side to side out of this Indian in file. Now, I'm going to listen here as Craig leads them down. I'm standing right here in the acceleration zone. He can make the jump whenever he likes. Not yet. Not yet. OK, it's up to him now. There he goes, fine. And they all go chasing. And another three-wide affair. And Scott Pike gets really aggressive on the restart. That's him going straight over the outside of the curbs. Lowndes in control. And here's Van Gisbergen. Oh, there's got to be contact there, and there was. This time it was Garth Tander getting a nudge. There was 10 drivers in 25 then that basically had to leap across the top of the curb. Winterbottom instantly putting pressure on McLaughlin. Lowndes controlled that beautifully. It's a totally different feel in the Twilight Affair. And up to this stage, under race conditions, everybody's been pretty handy around this turn. And everybody has been pretty aggressive at this one. It's always where the action is. Brake temperatures screaming at 800 degrees down at turn nine as the drivers launch on the stop pedal. And look at Lowndes. So comfortable around this circuit. He won the first ever race here back in 1999. That field compression of the safety car from the debris of James's car has actually served Jamie Wincup reasonably well because that stop the right rear was slow for him and he lost a heap of ground. It's put him back in contact with these guys now, so he'll be pretty racy. We need to keep an eye on him with his old foe, Mark Winterbottom. That setting sun up Wakefield Street's a nightmare for them at the moment. Rihanna's got some information for us on Jason Bright on screen, who's down the order. Yeah, just quickly fill in the gaps prior to that safety car. Jason Bright came in for his pit stop and the uh, guns were not turned on. The air guns were not turned on at all, so delayed significantly. Remember, he started from fourth position, now down in 19. Yeah, I heard them apologise to him. That's a strange one. Look at that car of James Courtney's with no passenger side front door on it. I'm surprised they haven't been forced to correct that. But a little strange. So Lowndes, again, a very impressive restart. 1.5 second lead over McLaughlin. A good battle going on behind there. Wink up by McLaughlin. It's a good, strong manoeuvre. Wink up will forge his way towards the back of Scott McLaughlin. And on that subject, the category technical managers got that call in terms of the car safety and integrity. And the car had a mechanical black flag come in and pull the door off James's car. The, the slightly worrying thing... ..is if anything were to get in the car. Yeah, that's, that's, right. that's the aspect that we're concerned about. There's, there's, um, and there's a little bit of side intrusion protection, uh, certainly in the driver's door. Not so much in the passenger's side. Sun. It's bad up no, there, isn't it? It'll be very difficult. The next 10, 15 minutes are going to be a horror story. Here's Courtney and Bright. These guys battling oh. for 19th and 20th and exchanging paint. 
hardly drill a hole in the passenger's door at least, but everything else you can still have a crack at. There's the per cap car, triple two, 21st. He got all tangled up in that mess down in turn nine in race one. We're riding with James. Van Gisbergen down the inside of Coulthard. This is for sixth and done. And Fabian, I was just about to say, has been man of the match so far. He started way down in 16th and got to six, so he gained 10 positions before that. So he's still nine spots up. Van Gisberg has done a great job. He's gained now nine positions. Tander has also gained nine positions. So there's been some very good mid-pack performances from Coulthard, Van Gisbergen and Tander. It's great to see that man there in the Wilson security entry out of Dick Johnson racing Scott Pye up and fighting inside the top 10 after a tough 2013. Lowndes leads the way. Hope you're enjoying your Saturday night V8 supercars at the Clipsal 500 where Craig Lowndes leads this second race of the year by 1.8 seconds of the Volvo of Scott McLaughlin with Jamie Winkup, Mark Winterbottom chasing. Hey, what about this guy, Gary Rogers? Does he have a way of uncovering talent or what? Scotty McLaughlin, Gary, uh, second spot at the moment, going beautifully in a brand new car. This is a remarkable start to the year for you guys. It is. Uh, I mean, Scott is a great driver, no doubt about it. And the guys have put together a fantastic car and look, you know, early days, but we're feeling, you know, I mean, it's great to start the year like this. I mean, it's been a huge time and effort to try and get this car or these cars built. And uh, it's just nice to see where we're at this stage for all those bikes in that shed there. Well, congratulations. The cars look fantastic and we're loving watching the race, Gary. Good on you. Thanks very much. Gary's got plenty of confidence in Scott McLaughlin and so too have our viewers saying that Scott can get Volvo their first podium this evening, 53% in favour on our viewer vote. Last time the Volvo won in the Australian Touring Car Championship was 1986. Robin Francivic at Adelaide International Raceway. 
and race control just advised that there'll be a post-race investigation on James Courtney in that incident up at Turn 4, which involved uh, Lee Holdsworth and also Scott Pye. On board the Volvo now, some telemetry, courtesy of Shannon's, to give you an understanding of the pace and the gear and the revs. This is the run into Turn 7. That little rasp in the background is the car out of breath at maximum RPM. 7,500. Brief moment of pause in sixth gear before aiming up for that very narrow hole in turn eight. The drama with doing the rear bar on the way up to turn eight is it has a big impact on the way you turn because it, it makes it softer at the back. So what Richard Holway said to Scott McLaughlin was tweak the rear bar if you need it, which means that it must have a bit of oversteer, means it's battling for rear grip, so they want to soften it off and make it look after its tyres better. But when you do soften the back of the car, it doesn't respond as well when you first turn the wheel. And at 245 kilometres an hour at turn eight, you want the immediate response. So stiffer in the rear is better for a, for a corner like that. On board before with Scotty McLaughlin, you had a glimpse also of the latest generation of the Motec a data logging system in the car and the display that the drivers see. That's the latest colour screen in that car, Rihanna. Dick Johnson and Steve Johnson just sitting in here watching their young guy, Scott Pye, sitting in fifth. That's a career best if race was old, if that's how it finishes. Well, so far, so good, but there's still, you know, 17 or 18 laps to go, but uh, he's doing a fantastic job. But both the guys, you know, have come out of the box really well, and I'm really pleased the way things are going. Thanks, Dick. Pleasure. Yeah, that was uh, pretty tight up there a moment ago, just as Rihanna started the discussion. We held our breath in that battle. It's on there at the moment with Shane Van Gisbergen on the attack. These guys are arguing over fifth and sixth. Scott's done a great job this weekend. Ooh, that thing looked loose in the rear through eight. Back of the car sliding. Here comes Shane. Tries the diagonal down the inside. He's got it on the apps. Oh, he's got it. He's tagged him. What a shame. That may... Oh, oh, it's not over yet. Oh, look at this, the whole world passes him by now. And we're looking at it from the uh, angle that we saw it as on the wrong side, really, but I'm not sure that Shane's far enough up to get away with that one, and that'll be one that Jason Barguana looks at very carefully, and there's Johnson family watching on, and Scott Pye from fifth plummets down, 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 down to 21st. And a little bit of an each-way bet on that one, Cropo, isn't it? Because he knew that Van Gisbergen was coming, Sometimes you've just got to give that spot away. Yeah. And, and at the end of the day, what it's done to him now, from a really healthy fifth or sixth, you know when. Yeah, very hard decision to make in this case for a young... There you are, there, look at that. There, he, wasn't, he wasn't really far up there, but Scotty didn't prove anything by not giving him a bit of room, because Scotty would have had a great run still down onto the inside in the next left-hander. So, good little lesson for him, I reckon, mate. Yeah, that's exactly right, Luck. And you've got to learn from those ones, because one of the things that happened with Scott last year is he got involved in too much of that stuff. And now, if the car's a bit better and you're operating in a little bit better area of the field, you've got to, your race craft has to improve. And as he gathered it back up and things settled down, Scott Pyatt went even further back from 21st to 24th. James Moffat was serious. Was close, close to that fence in car 360. <laughs> Went did an endurance race at Dubai earlier in the year, got some valuable miles in January as a part of the Nissan Global Motorsport Exchange program that they've got going. Very aggressive driver. Breakthrough win for him last year. We're looking at Tim Slade from the rear bumper of Rick Kelly's car. That's really good. heartened that that thing had good pace in race one. He said, for the first time ever, in the history of our team and our car, I feel like I'm in the game racing. I'm not having to drive all over the road and straight to cover everybody. Just tucked in behind those guys is uh, Will Davison. In fact, he's a couple ahead of Rick Kelly. Will's now in 11th after again starting back in 20th. So he's got that Erebus Motorsport Mercedes E63 working well, picking his way through the field. Craig Lowndes remains the man to beat. Gee, it's tough in the driver's seat.
Welcome back. It's been a long, tough day for his V8 supercar drivers. And there's still more to go on lap 26 out of 39. Very important news, Matty, because Shane Van Gisbergen's going to get a black flag. Pit lane drive through penalty for his role in that incident down at turn nine. Race director Tim Schenken just called that. It's gone up on the timing monitor, and there he is on screen, VIP pet food. So Jason Bargwan has determined that that wasn't far enough up. We weren't 100% sure. The shot from outside for me looked like it didn't quite get there. Pit in straight through, mate. Pit in straight through. That uh, drags him out of fifth position. And a good haul of points in a spot like that based on what he did also in the first race. And this is a great battle at the moment involving David Reynolds. He's got a couple of curb strikes on him. He's got James Courtney all over him. And gone. Actually, James has been no, They're all stop gone. Him. They're all gone. There goes Lee Holdsworth. <laughs> Just got the best free kick that he's had for a while. And David's been in a battle. Oh, oh he's up against big. the wall in that thing. He rubbed it, he had it sideways in the grass, and the last three or four laps for David Reynolds have been an absolute scramble. He got his ears boxed up at the western end of the circuit a couple of laps ago, and there's Shane serving that penalty. Well, he's gone from 14th to 20th in the last two laps. Drops Van Gisbergen down into 18th position here, just in front of James Courtney. Right in that battle group that we were just watching. <laughs> Davey Reynolds and the three-door Commodore. But we were on board with Dave Reynolds. You can hear the rear wheels. Oh. Look at that out to turn 11. That is very lucky to get away with that one. That's Ooh. so close. But we were on board. We heard the car battling to stop. And then you could see James Courtney down the inside. He was never going to stop either. So both guys off the road, Lee Holdsworth just drove the Mercedes around the inside and off into the distance. I'll bet those little paws of Davies were frantic in there trying to gather that one up. <laughs> right. There wasn't a lot of humour going on then. <laughs> and Lee Holdsworth just got a big cheer from the team boss, Betty Clemenko, too. That was a nice move, Betty. That was a great move. It's all in the strategy. <laughs> Good stuff. Hey, tell me, Will Davison, speaking of strategy, landed well in the team, into the top ten at the moment. You must be pretty pleased with his progress. I am, I'm really happy with his progress. He's, he's in a car that he's not used to, and he's just gone out there, and he's done exactly what we've asked of him. Betty, what about your emotions about a new year? You're excited to get this one going? Oh, more than excited. It's, it's something that uh, I haven't slept for two weeks. I can imagine that. You're a champion, Betty. Thanks very much. Thank you. Menko in charge of Erebus Motorsport. They donated $50,000 to the Westmead Children's Hospital on the test day at Sydney Motorsport Park. So battles galore raging here as the sun sets at the Clipsal 500. We'll bring you back for the final stages.
V8 Supercars on seven, season 2014. Ten laps to go in the second race here. Our first ever twilight race. Craig Lowndes is the leader. He's some four seconds up the road. His teammate, Jamie Wincup, is putting maximum pressure on Scott McLaughlin for second position. McLaughlin trying to hold on to this podium spot in Volvo's first outing. It's Polestar Racing. Just starting to see signals from the back of McLaughlin's car that it's stressed. It's sliding around here and there, it's wriggling here and there. And if you look at the braking stability in the mid-corner pace of Wincup's car, he's stalking him at the moment. So any tick of the clock, he's going to slice him. He'll try and sneak up the inside somewhere. I don't know that it'll be at this last corner, but he's been very strong traditionally here, not only this weekend, but in years by, down at turn nine, nine where he does that diagonal to run to the apex. So he'll be trying to wind himself into a position where he's close enough he keeps the momentum and then just goes whack and he goes out of the sight in the mirror of McLaughlin. Now Scott will be aware of it. He's got a television too. He'll have seen all that in the past and he's got to try and find a way to protect that but I'm not sure the rear tyres are going to help him. Good luck. Oh Neil and a young guy like Scotty, I mean how good is this for conditioning for the rest of his career? I mean if there's anyone you wanted to look out in the rear view mirror and not see in your bonnet then you rebind so would be Jamie Winkup. As the driver in front, you put a time, every little trick, stop early, stop late, turn in late, turn in early, everything, but you know you're not going to force Jamie to make a mistake. Mentally tough for this guy, and I just think tremendous conditioning for his future. Good exit, turn seven, McLaughlin saved that one, so that's one save. Exactly, and they've, been, they've had the fastest second sector all week. So one of the things about battling like this is for Jamie to do the pass that you said, McLaughlin's got to make a little mistake, either coming out of seven or through turn eight to position himself so that Winkup can challenge. Keep in mind that Scott's constantly adjusting his car and his mind around the conditions as well. In fact, if anything, it'll brought a little bit of a margin here. So he'd be encouraged by Richard Holway, his engineer, to have a little play with the front and rear anti-roll bars on the car. He might be making tiny little adjustments to the percentage. That's it. Eight to go, mate. Eight to go. Have a drink. That's Krusty, Richard Holway. Here's Gary Rogers, team owner of Volvo Polestar Racing. So little tweaks percentage-wise on the front and rear brake percentage. The drivers can adjust these in a V8 supercar. You can't do it in your road car. But as the fuel load changes, as the grip level alters, you can change that braking treatment to your satisfaction and liking, looking for maximum performance. And on that lap, Scotty McLaughlin was two tenths faster than Jamie Winkup. Ooh, big Ooh. slide. That was turn six. He turned it in. We saw Lowndes go off the road there in the previous race. When Winkup turned in, then he had immediate oversteer on. He almost went off the road. And Jamie's problem, his line of sight is blocked by a car. He's also ingesting a big pile of hot air at the moment. So hot turbulent air from the rear of the Volvo straight into the brake ducts on the Holden and disturbing the front air and uh, and the front wing behaviour in balance as well, Larko. Yeah, and to add to that, Neil, he's up against a car that's one of the fastest at turn eight, so he can't get on him under brakes. And since they've adjusted that rear bar, how beautifully does that thing put its power down? Now, a car not working well out there at the moment, Jason Bright, we expected a lot from him today, this weekend. Uh, he's radiating, they don't know what's wrong with the car, whether it's tyres, maybe a damper. Nice move up inside there, Shane Van Gisbergen. Don't know if it's a tyres, maybe a damper, maybe a broken anti-roll bar, which happens on the kerbs around here. No explanation, but certainly off the boil and don't expect him to bounce back. OK, so that's a shock absorber when Larko refers to the damper and car number 97, Shane Van Gisberg, in that extra position that you just saw on screen takes him to 15th in the field. That's a battle pack in there, boys. There's a headache in that game. <laughs> so he is. So all five manufacturers in the top ten. Will Davison in tenth. The lead Nissan is Michael Caruso in eighth. Garth Tander has done a great job to forge his way forward. So is Fabian Coulthard. That was a very, very good run. Conversely, Jason Bright not so good in this race that Mark Larkham just covered. This is Tim Slade attacking the back of Russell Engel. 
there's a bit of extra needle involved in that battle because that car that we're riding in at the moment was Russell's car. So he'll grow some extra elbow width in this process. He'll be making sure that Slady doesn't get an easy run. They had a great battle last year at Sydney Olympic Park at the back end of the year. Good pace mid-corner for Russell through turn eight there. And this battle here, 13th and 14th, those guys are 28 seconds. Oh, oh. Gizzy's in trouble. <laughs> Slade did that on purpose, Danny. As he, that was actually very good presence of mind. So Van Gisbergen had a big lunge. He was out of control. And as he was gyrating, Slade just helped him. Nice and easy, mate. Nice and easy. She came it was very him. good. It was a very good bit of driving. And when you've got that level of anticipation, just watch this. So here's Van Gisbergen down there. He's battling to stop. As he's about to gyrate, Tim's has gone, thank you, I'll just turn you the other way. What about how far back <laughs> the Giz made the commitment to that move? Remember, he's had to serve a pit lane penalty for an incident down here. Here we go. So he's just going for broke. Watch this. Car on your right. Now it's gone. Drive off. <laughs> That'll extend Russell Ingalls' life because it's just taken a bit of pressure off him as well and he was well under pressure here. The, the chopper also gives us a great angle. So watch this. The rears are locked. It's teetering. And then Tim... Kisses him goodnight. Well, there was a bit of niggle when they were at Stone Brothers Racing Room between That's those right. guys. So he's not he would... sending him Christmas cards anymore, Tim Slade. <laughs> so uh, like... Jeff Slade has been on the radio to Shane Van Gisberg and his engineer and just telling him to lower his heart rate and quietly get back on with the job. He's down in 19. McLaughlin was good there. Did you see that little exit out of turn 11? Nice and straight, looking after the tyres, and you can see there's the lap speed comparison. Five to go, mate. Five to go. Richard Holway there, coaxing young Scott to the end. He's only 20 years of age. Volvo's debut. He might have seen him off here. He's just giving himself that extra little bit of cushion. Jamie pushed very hard about three or four laps ago, and we kind of raised the tempo and the prospect of there being a change for position. I think it could be fading ever so slightly, but Wincup might be just resting the tyres a little bit, but he'll need to close the margin. Meantime, Lounce is checking out. But the lap time, Scott was actually the fastest of the first three cars on that lap. So he's, he's actually picked his game up a little bit. So the gap is four seconds, and that's pretty much how it stayed. The important thing for Scott McLaughlin is, yes, he's probably seen off Jamie Wincup for now, although you're never going to write Wincup off, but he's still got visual on the leader of the race. The other thing that's impressive, when we go on board with Scott at the moment, the wheel work is very gentle and deliberate. There's not a lot of wriggling going on. His steering traces, if you looked at post-race starter very deliberate turning the car in hitting his marks releasing the lock and straightening it up car four bad sportsmanship flag lee holdsworth for curb hopping down at turn two mclaughlin and lounds have got no curb strikes so if i was richard holway now you want to say hey mate you can run across here a little bit now yeah and you can't help but wonder that little bit of breathing space scotty has just enjoyed I just wonder if uh, if that's Jamie just giving his tyres a little breather. Looks to me like he's ready to attack. Well, just as you said that, Larko, that margin's closed up again. So I speculated that that might be the case. Just rest the tyres slightly because we're now in the zone where with only one curb strike against him for Jamie Wincup, he can up the pressure a bit now. Not much to lose, and he's got a big fistful of points from race one. Here he is. He's back to within a car length. That's so enough to be a nuisance when you're in Scott's car. So remember the spot. You said it before. This is the important exit. Turn seven, run up to turn eight. And because Wincup, you've, you've got to get the run. You've got to keep the flow up. Wincup's not quite getting off there as well. Just watch so this. Very nice, both guys. A little rear bar change there for Wincup. It's very strong under brakes. It's the strongest car of the field at turn nine. Well, he's able to run the car in a little bit quicker late in the stop wind cup because his mid-corner speed's a bit stronger than Scott. And Scott's having to slow the car a little bit more. So wind cup's getting very close. If he could get a better exit off seven, he'd have a crack at him down there. But I'm not sure that he's strong enough at seven at the moment. I reckon this is the spot he's getting. I reckon he's worked out that he can't get it done at oh. nine. Oh, big move. He locked a wheel and ran into the dirty stuff. Three that goes. may be the thing for Scott McLaughlin now to get to the end. That little gap. The, the gap there now is 0.8 of a second on that lap. Wincup lost about four tenths because it's a 22.5 versus a 22.9. And huge pressure and temperature here for Scott McLaughlin, and he is not blinking. 
So you've got wind cup all over you going into the final corner. It looks as though he could even give you a quick drilling as you get down there, and we're not seeing any faltering at all from McLaughlin. In fact, caught the dirt. Yeah, left rear dropped onto the dirt there for wind cup. That explains it a little bit more, but it's giving him a cushion. Here it is again from the back of Scotty's car. And I think Wing Cup's worked out that that's actually the spot now. I think that if he gets out of turn 11, the left-hander behind the pits, that the turn 13 run and the final corner is probably going to be a better spot than turn 9. Positions 4, oh. 5 and 6 here. Coulthard hit that curve on the inside really hard. And here comes Mostert. He's having a much better run in this second race than the first. Had a power steering drama if you weren't with our coverage earlier in the day in race 1 for car 6. On loan to Dick Johnson Racing last year, joined the series in the Perth round of the championship and really made his presence felt. A win at Queensland Raceway. Drafted back into the factory squad for 2014 when Will Davison went to Erebus Motorsport. And he's only a car length away from his teammate Mark Winterbottom. And Kultar was very lucky to get away with that one today. Oh, he hit the curb on the inside as hard as I've seen anyone all weekend. It bounced the car wide. You can see he's already hit the tyres at turn one because the front air dam is dislodged. And this will be good for Mostert's confidence, Neil. It's a very good run to get to where he is. And he knows in the race, in this particular part of today's proceedings, he's been every bit as fast, if not faster, than his teammate. Good job here, Garth Tander as well, who's watching brief on this little pack. So Garth is seven. Remember, he had some strife in the first race with a little misfire at the top end of the rev range and a problem with the front wing on the car, the air dam. So he's gathered it up now and is in the game. We're watching Mark Winterbottom in the office. He's busy glimpsing the rear view mirror at the moment on the run to eight. There's going to be, oh, be a drama out of this. Did you see Frosty? Oh, oh, there'll be a drama out of that. Seriously, I took that a step back wild. in the commentary box and he's 500 metres from me. That was very spooky through there because Coulthard was so close to the back of his car. It was light. It makes it light in the rear end. It destabilises the aero. Here we go, wind cup, you're right. Mark, he's on him at the final corner. That could be the spot. And Jamie has been rack racking up curb hops. He's using up what he's got left over the last couple of laps. If you're Scott, you've got to run straight through. Run it straight through. Yep. Did he get one? No, he still didn't. He just drive it across there. Extraordinary drive from this 20-year-old holding off the five-time series champ who's at the peak of his powers. <laughs> the ride control of that Red Bull car under brakes in turn four there was really impressive. He's right on the rear bumper of the Volvo. These guys playing for keeps. Look at Windcup. He's all over the back of this thing. He's got to get an exit here as they make the run to seven. If he's off here cleanly and he can harass McLaughlin, he has. his chance may come when they get down to turn nine. This is the moment. He's closer now on the run to eight. This is what he's got to do. Let's watch, listen and learn. Nothing in it. Move it over, Scotty. But if well anything, done. McLaughlin can hold his ground there and Wincup is at the absolute edge of the braking performance. He goes wide. No. He's trying to get underneath him. When they get to 10, the crowd reacts. This is fantastic. Wincup up the inside. McLaughlin oh. gives him some space. Just, they run. But the Red Bull Racing Man has got through. The champion's done the job. Dive down the inside. Down the inside. So close, what a battle! Unbelievable! Craig oh, Austin wow. wins, Scott 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 wins. Is back, and Scott McLaughlin puts one on the champ, <laughs> and Volvo into second on debut. Sensational, Scott McLaughlin! That is brilliant. Absolute brilliance. Well done, Scott McLaughlin and Jamie Wincup. That's as tough as an exchange gets. He may have given Jamie Wink up a little bump then. Hey, Gary. Gary Rotley wants to give his boys a cuddle. Hey. <laughs> you were right. That didn't work. Gary Rogers, you know how tough this game is. Better than anyone, mate. What a spectacular effort by both your team and your driver. It was. It was. I mean, it's tough, Clark, you know, but... Just, he never gave up, mate. <laughs> Look at you, mate. Yeah, good on you, mate. Really happy for you. Fantastic. Tears in his eyes. Gary loves a fighter. And he's got a true one in Scott McLaughlin. Now let's take a look at this final turn. So Wing Cup's got him. They rub panels. Scott goes on the inside. Wing Cup just went wide by himself. 
And McLaughlin put the hammer down to get second position. Great job. Wow. No bump and run in that. No, no drama at all. Look at this, guys. This, this is unbelievable. How Scott McLaughlin did not end up in the fence on the exit of that turn, I'll never know. But Jamie should be complimented for that Absolutely. because he f could have fed him in. Absolutely. Great exchange. Brilliant motor racing. Total respect. They gave each other space. And that's as good a contest as you'll see. Look at that. McLaughlin had the thing wheel spinning and tail wagging in second gear when he came off turn 11. And watch this. He positions back on the race line. That's where the grip is. Traditional line. Makes the apex. Jamie picks up the throttle and slides it. And Scotty gets one. How's that? He's no Sunday Volvo driver. He's a Saturday Volvo racer. With a hell of a fight. But congratulations to Craig Lowndes and Jeremy Moore. So Red Bull Racing deliver a one-two punch in terms of victory. And this huge crowd, 80,000 people here today. They've seen a, well, another classic. Lowndes, who won the first race here in 1999, now has six race wins at this circuit. And this will be emotional. And the Red Bull team are out there to applaud Scott they, McLaughlin as well. They did. All of pit lane were doing this. This was just a fantastic reaction from the industry for Gary Rogers Motorsport and Scott McLaughlin. Well done, Lounsey. Yeah. 95 <laughs> race wins now. <laughs> He goes over to congratulate Scott McLaughlin because we appreciate the enormity of what he has achieved. But congratulations to you, Craig Lowndes. I mean, that's why you are the champion. Uh, mate, tremendous effort. You end day one as the championship leader. Nice way to start this year. Yeah, thanks, Barrett. Uh, yeah, look, yeah, it was great to have the first uh, race out of the way. We had a great one, too. I was actually watching the B stream, watching these two guys how going out at Hammer and Tong. So uh, luckily I had a bit of a buffer. But uh, look, credit to the guys in Red Bull. It's, uh, we made a few tweaks over uh, you know, between races. The sun was a little bit of a worry for about five laps, but then, of course, it disappeared behind all the, uh, the buildings and away we went, so uh, what a day. Those tweaks all set for tomorrow now? Oh, look, for sure, no doubt, and uh, we've got, obviously got to think about a longer race, not just the sprint races, but, uh, you know, the boys will do a fantastic job. We've got a car in one piece, so, look, it's all looking good. But I just going to say hello to Levi and Chili at home. It's looking good. Good idea, Lousy. Congratulations. Hey, come with me now, folks. Let's catch up with this guy as he embraces his team, Scotty McLaughlin, and it's been... A remarkable result, and uh, as he just catches up with Richard and the crew, Scotty, that was incredible. That is going to be one of the great moments of the year, and you've nailed it again. Well done. Holy cow. <laughs> um, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Holy cow. Um, no, nah, seriously, my boys, man, um, I can't thank them enough. It's amazing. Richard, the crew, all the fans, you guys are playing the Volvo jokes, but I guess they're gone now, so... Um, <laughs> Yeah, so uh, thanks, guys, and um, mate, this is—I've never been this happy second. Jesus! <laughs> <laughs> now, just take us through the emotions for you. You're on the last lap. You got Jamie Wincup on your tail. He gets by you. Yeah. What happens then? Oh, I was an idiot. I, I slowed down too much, so I—I uh, I should have blocked him a bit better. But he got me, and then we went side by side. It was pretty good racing, and I don't know what happened on there. I, I just plucked her in first, and gave some gentle. Oh, fuck yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Sorry. Uh, we understand there's a level of excitement, Scott. Sorry, sorry. Sorry to all the little kids out there. <laughs> but congratulations, Adam. And what a way to kickstart your team. What a way to bring Volvo into V8 Supercars. Volvo, Polestar, Valvoline. Thanks, guys. Um, hopefully we've got more of this. Yes. Awesome duel, mate. Congratulations, Scott. You'll see on the podium. And, of course, Jamie Wincup, who was right there throughout it, too. Jamie, awesome. That was an amazing jewel you gave us. We, we were riding with you guys all the way. Uh, credit to Scotty, but great effort by you as well, mate. Yeah, I, I suppose the crowd's happy. That's the main thing. <laughs> we, uh, we, uh, yeah, that's what it's all about. You know, that's what this sprint format's all about, going hard. And, um, yeah, went hard to the end. Scotty did a great job. He were uh, hard and fair. Well done. We'll see you on the podium. Good on you, Jamie. Thank you. Cheers. Hard and fair and furious at times. What a finish. What a finish. These guys are out of control. So this is how it started. Lowndes was on pole position. Scott McLaughlin was next to him, but instantly McLaughlin found himself battling Lowndes' teammate in Jamie Wincup, and we know how that would end. Richard Holway looking on. Jason Bright's car number eight had troubles, but not as much as James Courtney's car 22 tangled up with Scott Pye and Lee Holdsworth, and it became a three-door Commodore. 
after the HRT crew had got in there and ripped it apart and gave him some fresh air for the rest of the night. That was a bizarre incident. Scott Pye was doing so well, looking at a career best finish in the top five until he got turned around by Shane Van Gisbergen and then it was on. The Giz came firing back after serving a penalty. Tim Slade just pushed him out of the way and this extraordinary final lap, this amazing dice for second as Lowndes crosses and gains the chequered flag. The entire stand went up to applaud and cheer home young Scott McLaughlin against Jamie Winkup. It's a wonderful story. Mark Winterbottom in fourth, Fabian Coulthard, Chas Mostert. Excellent effort. Good fight from Garth Tander as well in car number two. Midfield, Russell Ingle finishes 13th. Van Gisbergen would end up in 16th. And Scotty Pye down in 20th. Dale Wood in the last man running with David Wall not making the finish. Time for the podium. Race two of our year. And would you please congratulate the winning drivers from our second race of the V8 supercar season. In first place for Red Bull Racing Australia, Craig Lowndes. In second spot for Valvoline Racing GRM, Scott McLaughlin. And in third place for Red Bull Racing Australia, Jamie Wincup. Making the presentation to our, or receiving the trophy, I should say, on behalf of the winning team from Red Bull Racing Australia, Jeremy Moore. Presenting the third place trophy is Mr. Andrew Ford, the chairman of South Australian Motorsport Board. Presenting the second place trophy is Mr. Jeff Timms, director of sales, Clipsal by Schneider Electric, our major sponsor. Presenting to the winning team is Mark Warren, the chief executive officer of the South Australian Motorsport Board. And making the presentation of the first place trophy is the Honourable Leon Bignall MP, the Minister for Motorsport. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the 2014 V8 Supercars Clipsal 500 Adelaide race two winners. Another stellar drive from Craig Lowndes. Another gripping race. This season is alive. 95 career race wins for Lowndes. He'll be aiming at that century sometime this year. And he has the championship lead after day one of season 2014 with a second and a first. So five points ahead of his teammate and a good bank of points for Mark Winterbottom especially. So we've got all of the uh, manufacturers inside the top ten in the championship. Great start to the season.